Being a Buddhist monk is hard. You have to examine your own self, refuse all desires, then grapple with the realization that wanting to attain enlightenment is the ultimate desire. Crap. In the Kamakura period, they made things easier for the masses. Before, Buddhism was for the elites. You had to read old religious books and find the difference between beauty and nothingness. To a blacksmith worried about his next meal, Buddhism was about as unrelatable as millionaires posting relatable tweets. Things soon changed. At the time, government offices were dominated by only a few families. Many nobles and scholars found themselves locked out of government. It's terrible not having options in life, they said. They had nothing to do, so they dove into religious texts, hoping to find another path to relevance. A new era of religious learning opened up, giving people a positive environment to hate each other's guts forever. Religious thinkers fought and split into new groups that thought each other's mothers should have mabikied them. The Buddhist revolution gave birth to a few main schools, Pure Land, Zen, Nichiren, and Hufflepuff. No. This video is about how Pure Land Buddhism emerged and pissed off the powerful. We'll talk about the other schools in later videos. Pure Land Buddhism came from the beautiful bald head of a monk named Honen. As a boy, he lost his father in some political feud and joined a small temple. A few years of studying later, he went to Enryakuji on Mount Hie, the Harvard of temples, the king's landing of the clergy. Enryakuji was the main temple of the old Tendai school of Buddhism. They had connections to all the elites of Japan. A million opportunities opened up to Honen, which he ignored because he was a Buddhist. He moved to a remote part of the mountain to study without the distractions of politics and acolytes, casually starting the Buddhist revolution. In 1175, after 30 years of thinking a lot, Honan realized that, oh my Buddha, he could never follow all of the Buddhist precepts. He was bound to keep violating them. Some of the rules were hard to follow, like you couldn't eat meat or you couldn't enjoy meat. It wasn't easy. It's hard to reach enlightenment when your face is up a courtesan's kimono. It was at this point that Honan learned a life lesson. If you can't follow the rules, change them. He dug through the teachings for another path to salvation and found it in the Nembutsu. The Nembutsu is just a phrase. The phrase is Namu Amida Buts, or I take refuge in Amida Buddha. Monks today repeat those words all the time when they meet someone, when they say goodbye, or when they're about to lay a kung fu smackdown on a bad guy. The Nembutsu is like a prayer to this one important Buddha named Amida. A prayer for him to welcome you to his pure land, which is a land of beauty inhabited by gods and humans. Those who enter after they die are taught how to attain enlightenment by the gods and Amida himself. Technically, the pure land was only a final step before reaching enlightenment. The goal wasn't just to reach that land, the goal was enlightenment. But the public saw the pure land as paradise. Enlightenment, enlightenment. They just wanted to get into paradise. One day, Honen experienced a religious vision that showed him the light. He realized that to enter the Pure Land, to reach salvation, you only needed to do one thing, speak the Nembutsu. He got this idea from scripture. In the larger Pure Land Sutra, Amida Buddha vowed that whoever called his name would be reborn in his Pure Land. And so began the Jōdōshū, or the Pure Land School. This was a huge, earth-shaking, boob-exploding belief. Anyone could repeat a few words. You didn't need special training or discipline or priests. You didn't need any other rituals. You just had to trust in Amida's vow. Buddhism was open to the masses. Any Joshmo Buddhaga could join. Honan had a high opinion of the common people. He thought they were high in stupidity and wickedness. It was impossible for them to reach enlightenment by themselves, but his ideas would allow every one of these thick dumbos to enter the Pure Land. The old Buddhist schools like Tendai were all about studying scripture and how each sentence had a hundred different meanings, all of them confusing. Honan simplified his teachings. He focused on rituals and experiences, things that the common folk enjoyed. But the number one thing was to repeat the Nembutsu. After Honan died in 1212, his loyal disciples all united to attack each other and break the unity. They clashed over how to interpret his ideas. Honan thought his idea was simple, just perform the practice of repeating the Nembutsu and have faith that Amida will allow you into his Pure Land. But Honan's followers started asking, well, which was more important, practice or faith? And how should you live your life? The practice side thought you should repeat the Nembutsu often and live moral lives worthy of the Pure Land. The faith side was more chill. 
they thought you should trust in Amida's vow. You didn't really need to live morally, you didn't even need to say the Nembutsu that much, just have faith that you'll enter the Pure Land after death. His main disciples split off like Ned Stark's kids to create their own Pure Land schools. Shinran was one of them. He created the most successful Pure Land school, the Jodo Shinshu, or the True Pure Land School. Shinran seemed like a cool guy. He once had an intense dream that convinced him to binge on Honan's teachings, a lifelong binge. He got married, discarding his vow of celibacy like a used man sheath, he didn't care. So if you thought reciting the Nembutsu was already the simplest thing you could do, Shindan was gonna make it simpler. For him, Pure Land Buddhism had one problem. It promised salvation in the next life, but it didn't do a tanuki's balls for you in your current shitty life. Shindan changed that. He said, no, no, trust in Amida's vow. He was a faith guy. Faith was more important. He told people, Amida already saved you, you just need to accept his gift. He thought that the first time you spoke the Nembutsu, you were guaranteed salvation. How did this help people in their current lives? It gave them peace of mind that no matter what, they would enter the Pure Land. It was the easy mode to salvation. True Pure Land is the most popular branch of Buddhism in Japan today. After Shinran died, his followers built the Honganji Temple on top of his gravesite in Kyoto, and it became their headquarters for a while. On the other side of the Nembutsu spectrum, there were the practice enthusiasts. The monk Ipen formed the Jishu, or the Time School. He said your faith and your actions didn't matter at all, only chanting the Nembutsu mattered. He urged people to stop being stupid and doing useless things, just clear your mind of distractions and chant the Nembutsu a bajillion times. He went around to different villages preaching the Nembutsu gospel. He would gather people in big groups to chant the Nembutsu and dance to the rhythm of the chants, which sounds super fun actually. People loved it. He wrote a lot, but at the end of his life he had some kind of a breakdown and burned most of his writings, complaining that they all ultimately led to the same piece of advice, to repeat the Nembutsu. So what the hell was the point in writing anything? After he died, the story was, a bunch of his disciples jumped into the sea so they could enter the Pure Land with him. That may have dampened the spread of his school, also shows you how many fanboys he had. Now the traditional Buddhist schools were still running things, and they didn't appreciate these new whippersnappers running around saving everyone, especially people at the bottom of society. They couldn't have these peasants dirtying up their enlightened afterlife, sleeping on their enlightened park benches, living off their enlightened tax money. To make things worse, some Pure Land followers also formed criminal Nembutsu groups. They were like, well, if we're gonna be saved no matter what we do, we might as well go around doing crimes and effing up society. The old Buddhist temples and the government tried to fight the spread of this Pure Land pandemic. Their vaccines were laws. In 1200, the Kamakura shogunate kicked all Nembutsu priests out of Kamakura. In 1204, the major temples pushed the imperial court to ban Pure Land teachings. Luckily, Honan successfully argued that his teachings did not undermine order, and warned his followers to not act like gigantic dicks. In 1207, a few disciples of Honan were executed, and Honan, Shinran, and a few others were exiled to different parts of the country. Sure, dying sucked, but the Pure Land schools and the other new Buddhism schools gained a reputation for being anti-establishment, which boosted their popularity with the masses. Pure Land Buddhism survived and grew and is still strong today. But don't worry, we'll get them someday, we'll get them good. Alright, we have some new Emperor Patrons on Patreon, Kelton97 and the Great Heathen King. You guys are freaking awesome. And then we have a bunch of new Patrons. Fujiwara no Michinaga, Simon Schopersberger, Victor Blackburn, Rascal Sohovic, Jeremy Black Amy B, Kyojin no Gaki Ness Brown, Linda Fensei Lofredo, Eric Toshik, DJ Panda, Chaotic Cannibal Channel Zero, Brendan Isaac, Siran Davis, Rin, Malasha, Stephanie Quayar, Ye Princess of Wingy Trung, Ife Anyi Eze Anya. <laughs> Alright, check out these other videos, I love you, and spread the knowledge.